It should be obvious, but I love to hike, and I especially love a good multi-day trek. My wife and I often joke that when we come back from vacation, what we really need is another vacation because usually we've gone on some crazy hike. But I also think trekking is a really great thing to do even for beginners or those that don't hike very often. So today, I wanna to talk to you about the best hike I've ever done, the best trek I've ever done. It will blow your mind. And I actually think it might be the perfect hike to hike, even if you don't like hiking. I'll explain, but be warned, addiction to trekking is a known side effect. This is the trail underfoot. The Laugavagurin is a 55 kilometer route that goes from Landman Alaugar to Korsmark, also known as Thorsmark. It's located in Iceland's Southern Highlands region and it's home to some of the most beautiful, scenic, the only other word I can think to describe it is otherworldly scenery you've ever seen. It has multicolored, beautiful mountains. It has black volcanic deserts. It has steaming hydrothermal vents. It has glacial rivers and lakes and deep valleys and precipitous ravines. It's really incredible. Now, 55 kilometers seems like a lot, and it is, but it really translates to about 12 kilometers a day with a three to 400 meter elevation climb that can be done by most hikers, even those with little or no experience, but with a moderate amount of athletic ability in about three to four hours. So what that means is that if you leave in the morning, you're probably gonna get to camp by about noon that day, which means you have all afternoon to rest, explore the area and recharge for the next day. The trail can be done in three to five days, of course, depending on athletic ability and well, frankly ambition. We did it in five days in August and that was perfect for us. Now there's two ways of doing it. Either you can camp along the way in traditional tents or you can stay in nice cozy huts that are maintained by the Icelandic Touring Association. I highly recommend staying in the huts. Here's why. First of all, if you're staying in the huts, you don't have to carry a tent or a sleeping mat. It makes it much easier, much more comfortable to carry a lighter pack. You also don't have to worry about picking a good spot or dealing with all that bad weather if you come across it. This makes it way easier for inexperienced hikers that want a lighter pack and a more comfortable hike. Even experienced seasoned hikers don't mind their creature comforts from time to time. I know I definitely put myself into that category. Secondly, staying in the huts means that you get to meet people from all around the world as you stay together in a fairly isolated, fairly confined hut. The huts have communal kitchens where you can cook your food. They let you connect with other hikers and swap stories and share experiences along the trail. It's really a wonderful experience and a wonderful way to meet people and have a great time. Most of the huts even have toilets and hot showers, which is a great luxury to have at the end of a long day of hiking. The only downside to staying in the huts, of course, is that they are a little bit more expensive than camping. So that is a drawback. However, if you're gonna spend all that money to fly to Iceland and take the bus up to Landman Alaugar, you might as well splurge the extra little bit of money and stay in the huts and give yourself a much more pleasant experience. And if you're a beginner hiker or someone with not a lot of experience, it's a really great way to do the trek in a comprehensive way without the extra weight and inconvenience of having to camp. If you do decide to stay in the huts or even if you plan on camping, here's how I would break down the trip. Okay, so even before the hike starts, I recommend you get out there the day before. You actually take a 4x4 bus out from Reykjavik. It's a, kind of a cool experience. But you get there the day before your hike, which means you have most of the day in Landman Alaugar, which is essentially just the hut and not much else. There's two reasons to stay the first day in Landman Alaugar. One is that there's a really cool hot spring which is right next to the hut. It's essentially just a little stream that's hot from geothermal activity but it's a pretty cool place to spend the day surrounded by remote Icelandic mountains. The second reason is that there's lots of trails and places to explore around Landman Alaugar. You can hike to the top of some of the mountains and see these breathtaking vistas of mountain ranges and lava fields. In fact, this is the place where I took one of my very favorite photos ever of my wife looking out over the view. It actually hangs proudly in our house today. So day one. Day one is Landman Alaugar to Hraftanuskar. Side note, I'm totally gonna screw up the names 
here, so if you speak Icelandic, I'm sorry. So day one is about 12 kilometers and four or five hours or so. This is probably the hardest day of hiking because you have to climb from Landmannalaugar, which sits at about 600 meters, all the way up to Raftanuskar, which is at 1,100 meters or so. So there's a lot of climbing over that 12 kilometers. The trail begins with a hike through an ancient lava field that's pretty cool, and then you start your steep ascent up through bubbling geothermal vents and mud pools and fumaroles. Then it continues through a rhyolite mountain range where you can see incredible colors of blue, yellow, red, green. It's incredible. You hike partly over a glacier until you finally reach Raftanuskar, which is surrounded by black obsidian that sparkles like glass. The hut here is very basic, but you have amazing views over the glacier and incredible sunsets. Day two takes you from Raftanuskar to Alftavatn, which is another 12 kilometers or four or five hours. This day is much easier than day one because it's mostly downhill, although you make your way over rolling glacial fields. Some of the snow fields might require crampons depending on the time of year. We were there in August, we didn't have any crampons, just hiking boots, and we made out just fine. Once you're through the rolling snow fields, you actually start to descend into this luscious green valley. This was actually one of my favorite parts of the hike because it reminded me of something straight out of the land before time. Now if you were born in the 80s, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Then you have a long hike ahead of you on the valley floor until you reach the next hut, which is Altavatn, which is next to this beautiful lake and towering mountains. The hut here is very cozy and beautiful and you have a nice grassy spot next to the lake where you can relax for probably the better part of the afternoon. Day three is from Alftavatn to Emstruer and this is about 15 kilometers or six or seven hours. This is longer than day two or day one in terms of distance, but it's actually not that bad because it's mostly flat and maybe a slight uphill to reach Emstruer. The trail actually requires crossing two glacial rivers which are bone chillingly cold. We actually got help crossing the second river by a 4x4 that was that was crossing at the same time. That's definitely the way to go. But if you don't have access to that, I definitely recommend bringing a good pair of water shoes. This is the only day that it rained for us on the trail, but boy did it rain. We actually crossed an ancient black riverbed and the inclement weather actually made for some really beautiful photography. So while it was cold and dreary and a little bit miserable, I'm actually really glad we had the day that we did. The hut at Emstruer is next to an enormous canyon with the river flowing at the base. It's home to some pretty outstanding views. So day four is from Emstruer to Porsmoor. This is again about 15 kilometers or so, or six or seven hours. This day is similar to the previous two in terms of length and difficulty, although the sheer variety of landscapes along the way make it really unique. The trail follows the edge of the canyon and then crosses another glacial river, which can be a bit of a challenge to wade across depending on the weather and the time of year. Again, we were there in August and didn't have any issues crossing that river, but I can see how it could be a challenge. From there, the trail enters a birch forest where you see lots of vegetation and birds. Then it's a short-ish hike to Porsmark. The hut here was very spacious, it had plenty of room, and it had beautiful views over the valley. It was really a great place to spend some time waiting for the bus to take you back to Reykjavik. So why do I insist that this is such a great trek for beginner hikers? Well, because I did it with my entire family, including my 60-year-old dad, who is not a hiker, not particularly athletic, and had never done anything remotely like it at the time. And he fared well, actually. He loved it and was able to complete the entire hike with no problems. In fact, no one in my family had done a trip remotely like that, aside from my wife, and they came away with it with a newfound appreciation for trekking. If you read about this trek online, it can seem pretty intimidating, but really it wasn't. The distances were pretty reasonable, and if you stay in the huts, you can have a fairly light backpack, which makes it actually pretty accessible for most hikers. So if you're considering a trip to Iceland, I highly recommend putting this trek on your list. Let me know in the comments if you've already done the Laugavagurin or whether you're considering it and you need a little bit of inspiration or encouragement. See you next time.